Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Your day off. My name is Corey. Of course, I'm sitting with, well, actually, I'm sitting with my best friend, Katie, today. What's up, Katie? Hi, how's it going? Thank you for uh, sitting in with us. Absolutely. Today's an interesting day because we uh, we have our, uh, we have, we're bringing in on our friend, Mr. Jay Ladner. And uh, for the first time ever, Jay Ladner is going to bring in one of his friends to um, Mr. Elon Cohen. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of excited about the, uh, about, the, about the conversation today. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling like Jay's going to have a lot of questions. So I'm excited to kind of give, him the mic a little bit oh, you're like jay's ever shot away from a mic <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't happen he just you know he, he's always the first one to he is a little timid <laughs> he, is, he is a little timid um yeah dude i can't i can't wait to get into it i i just you know on a real real level i absolutely adore jay ladner he's he's one of my favorite people to hang out with um we just have such a good authentic good time you know and he always brings the energy to the room too mm -hmm. like you know if you're ever feeling down on yourself you know reach out to jay and he'll he'll, he'll he, he's like he's like the uh the hypest girl of all the hypest girls right like like he hypes himself he hypes you he hypes everything man and he hypes the industry more importantly most oh importantly, yeah yeah he hypes the industry as well never seen him not smiling i think no, me either. Yeah. Mm -mm. I've, I've never seen him. Or he's just always happy to see us. Or happy, <laughs> happy to see you, <laughs> yeah. maybe, you know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know what? What What's a bad mood Jay look like? We probably need a... tears streaming down his face while he's smiling. Oh, that's probably it. You know, we probably need conversation with his husband, you know. We yeah. chat with his husband about, like, what, what's a bad mood Jay like? Huh. I'll never forget, like we were doing, we did a podcast with um, Teresa Scanlon, who was, um, she was the 2011 Miss America. Um, and her story is really interesting because she won, she's the youngest Miss America in history. So she won at 17 years old. But part of her story, what's crazy is that she, um, she was homeschooled. So you kind of have to imagine like here she's homeschooled. She's lived in her home her entire life. And then at 17, she, she wins Miss America. And then for the next year, she was gone from the home. So imagine like never Whoa. leaving your parents home yeah. to them being on the road at 17. And, and I was talking to her and we were talking to her about it. And um, one of the things that she brought up that I found very interesting, obviously, because I'm still talking about it, is that, you know, your family um, always gets the worst side of you. You know, they always get the worst. And like, I was like, wow, that hit me like a, a ton of bricks. So anyways, I imagine that's what Jay's husband would say. Anyways, should we get in? Let's do it. Let's get in. Mr. Jay Ladner, man. Welcome. Welcome back to your day off. Hey, Slay. Hey, everyone. It's me, Jay. And you already know what's up. I'm taking over hair industry with my favorite people. I'm telling you what. I, cause you know, me and Nina Tolio, we have our podcast, right? And it's wild to be on the other side of it whenever the intro is bantering. So <laughs> I like am calming down my laughter. Um, I do want to say this. Um, I believe, and we're not going to get into it, but I believe Elon has seen me in my worst times. I mean, we've been in this together for a long time. It's like over six years. So I love that. We're fam. And thank you for saying I'm a vibe because I choose it. I choose the vibe. You hear me? No, no, I, I love that. And I love the way that, that, that you represent the industry. I, I love that, you know, th th there's enough spaces on online and on the internet to to have like negative um, uh, um, conversations and negative like relationships, but but I just love how you're you're always bringing the best of our industry out every time. Every time I see you, whether you're you're posting, whether it's through your enthusiasm, whether whatever it is, you're always representing the industry in the way that I would like the industry to be to to, to be represented. And and you know, as a hairstylist and and as somebody that's been in the industry for too many years, you know, thank yeah. you. I really really appreciate by how again how you represent. 
represent how you represent the industry. So I, okay. I'm curious for you, Jay. So I want you to tell us a little bit about your, your special guest today. Uh, uh, speaking of, of the hype girl, you know, I want you to hype, hype up our guest today and, uh, and, and give, give us, give us all of Elon's details. All right. So I'm super pumped because Today is a very special day. I think for me, for Corey, for Katie, I don't think we've ever really, me personally, have ever interviewed to this level on a podcast um, a president of a hair manufacturer. And, you know, there's, I've been in the gig for 15 years and I've had the opportunity to work with some phenomenal brands, right? Like, just been in the in the streets, right? In the trench of building that credibility. And my life changed, literally. You, you feel me every single day on my social media, when I teach, when I'm by myself or I'm with Oligo Professional. Oligo Professional has changed my life. They've actually been the first brand um, to truly see me not for any other thing than this is Jay Ladner. This is your credibility. We want to grow with you. We're going to work hard together, but we're also going to grow hard together. And today is special because we have Elon Cohen, the president of Oligo Professional on the podcast with us today. And this man is a brilliant he is a mentor to me. He always shows up raw, unedited, authentic. He has hard conversations with so much grace, right? So he's a fabulous, fabulous representation of what a president should look like, be like, feel like, sound like in this hair industry. So welcome, Elon Cohen, the president of Oligo Professional to the podcast. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're going to make me blush with all these compliments, but thank you. I was going to say such an introduction. On yeah, that. I mean it. I mean it. And Corey, Katie, I know y'all can relate as hairdressers. Like, we've seen it. Like, we've seen all sides of the facet. And thank you. I mean it, Elon. Thank you so much for how you represent that company I appreciate, and that. I appreciate you thank you so much for the kind words and uh they mean a lot to me so thank yes. you yes so i want to jump right in if that's cool yeah. i want to jump right in elon first of all if everyone's introducing themselves to you where are you from tell us a little bit about that so we are based in montreal canada so we're on the east coast of canada we're about 400 miles north of new york city and um, and yeah, so we we're based here. Our plant is based here, and and head office is based in Montreal. And um, you know, we've been in business for thirty six years, so uh, we love it here. It's nice. It's quiet. It's a bit cold in the winter, but it's all good. <laughs> it really is. I feel like if no one has been to Montreal, you have to go. Get on a flight, buy the ticket, go. Like it's such a vibe. And I was telling, actually, Elon, I want you to kind of describe this. It's off the cuff. But I was telling um, Corey and Katie about Quebecois and, like, what that means. And can you kind of describe what that Quebecois, like, culture is? Because it it lives and breathes inside of all of a professional. Right. So without getting into history, so Quebec is, we have, like, we have provinces in the country, right? And Quebec is the only French province in the country. Most of them, although it's a bilingual country, most of them is mostly English. So there's a very, you know, Quebec has a very unique uh, culture where there's a very strong European influence from the French. And most people speak French here. But because, you know, our neighbors were close to our American neighbors, there's also a very strong uh, American English influence. So the melting pot of all that makes it a really interesting culture where I've heard this many times where Americans come to Montreal, they feel they're in Europe and Europeans come to Montreal, they feel like they're in America. So it's one of those melting pots, which is really cool. And uh, and for people like me that travel a lot, right, whether it's in the rest of Canada, whether it's in the U.S., 
every time I come back home, I notice the the difference in in culture, and it's uh, and it's nice. It's it's a nice environment to be able to um, you know just to live how we live with the French and the cuisine, the food, the the art, the everything. It's really nice. Uh, it's a nice environment. Elon, what's up with like all the uh, all the hair uh, companies that are in like Quebec or like even Toronto and stuff? There's so many like of uh, of like these micro brands, you know, that that, that are kind of located there. I know, like um, like in Design Me there and Fast Foils is there and Framar is there. Framar, yeah. yeah. There's so many that are right there on on the board. Is there a reason for that, or is it just coincidence? Sure, I think it's coincidence. I think Design Me is in Quebec. I think Framar is in Niagara Falls, which is in Ontario. There's also a few other brands. I'm not sure, but I think, you know, I, I, I the 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 beauty industry has always been, particularly here, uh, proportionally speaking, a bigger industry in, in, in Canada than it has in the US, more salons, more. And so I just think it's a, you know, it's a bigger industry, proportionally speaking, of course. And so maybe we have, you know, our fair share of brands and our fair share of brands that do well. So, um, yeah, there's quite a few, actually, Corey. That I think of it. So it's it's like all these brands that I'm interested in, and all these brands that are making a difference. Like, oh, they're in Canada too. Like, like it's, it's, it's got a wild. Canada yeah. know what's up. They know what's up, right? And, and specifically, know. I would say the Quebec market is a very, very strong hair color market, and it's a very, very competitive hair color market. And for brands like ours, I've always said Quebec is to some extent the benchmark of how we perform because the European brands come into Quebec and they're very, very aggressive in trying to uh, establish and build a following. Many of them have offices and all that. So, so yeah, it's a strong color market and Canada is a, uh, like you said, that's a few brands that do quite well. So they're really proud of. So you, there's no way that you're old enough to have started the company 36 years ago. So, uh, so uh, how'd you get there? How'd you find it? What's that story? Right. So the story is I've been blessed enough to be born into this business. Um, um, my father worked for a hair care company that no longer exists. And in 1986, decided to create his own business. And back then it was we would manufacture and develop products for other companies. So basically the business itself is 36 years old, but for the first 20 something years of the business, we manufactured and developed products for other companies. We did not have our own brand. We did not make our own products. That's all we did. And so for, for, for you know, over that- Was it like white label stuff that they were creating? Like were they creating- Not label? even, it was 90% of it was developing the actual formula. You know, companies would come and see us and say, I'm looking for a color that looks like this, that smells like this, that pours like this, or a developer, or back then a lot of perming, a lot of smoothing system. As you know, many companies, some companies make their own product, but many don't. And so when companies that don't make their own products look for product developers to develop a product for them. So we we built the reputation um, of being a good product developer, and many companies came to see us to develop their product. So Simply put, we would make a formula for them and sell it to them. And they would think that formula and produce it. In some cases, we had a small plant. We would make the products. But in most cases, we wouldn't even make the product. We would simply develop it, the formula, based on guidelines that were provided by the client, and we would sell the formula. And what's, what's ironic is fast forward to today, over the last decade, in many cases, we compete against product that we developed like 15, 20, 30 years ago, which is very like, ironic, but it is what it is. So, so yeah. So, so we did that for, for, for the longest time. We developed quite a reputation in developing products in expertise. And although we did some shampoos, conditioners, treatments, masks, all that fun stuff, I think the bulk of our business was on the service side. So we followed all the trends from perming in the 80s to, you know, to, to straightening and Japanese straighteners and all these different straighteners back in the day. And of course, we did a lot of color. Uh, everybody knows lighteners is huge the last, you know, 15, 10, 15 years. We did some of that. Uh, when when regulation in Europe changed on all kinds of stuff, many brands had to reformulate. They would come see us to reformulate. So we did all that kind of stuff for, I would say, about 20, close to 25 years we made products and developed products for other companies without having our own products. 
That's amazing. So how did you, how did you evolve into like um, being in the market, having your own product? Right. So, so there, there's a few, there's a few reasons. First of all, when the second, so my parents started the business, when the second generation were three brothers right now running the business, I'm the oldest brother, but I'm not the first brother, brother to join the business. But when we joined the business, you know, none of us had a chemistry background. Um, so we didn't really bring value to the business. We were more, you know, guys who understood business, who understood a bit of marketing and all that. So slowly but surely, the thought of creating our own brand came about. And that's how we, we thought we brought value to the business. That's number one. Number two, we started seeing what was going on in the industry. And if you remember back then, there was a lot of consolidation. Many brands were getting acquired, right? Many distributors were getting acquired, independent distributors. I remember, you know, 15 years ago, there was probably 40, 50 independent distributors in North America. Today, there's maybe half of that. Uh, so, so, so brands being acquired, distributors being acquired, and, and so there was less and less brands available for independent distributors. So the combination of the combination of the second generation joining the business um, with the landscape, which we felt was favorable for for new hair color brand and um, combining that with the expertise that we have developed over 25 years of making products for other companies, we felt there was an opportunity and it was the right time um, to take a risk and to launch a brand. And that's kind of when we launched Oligo Professional. And uh, yeah, and it's been a I, I love that. I want to settle a debate, right? And I know everyone has been saying Oligo, but Elon, what is the correct, there's a couple parts. What is the correct way to say Oligo professional? And how did the word Oligo come about in the backstory of its meaning? Right. So funny enough, for the first couple of years, people were calling us by a different name. So Joe. So it took us a couple of years to get to, to get people to say it, and I know it's it's uh, it's a bit French, I guess. So oligo, I think that's the right way of saying it. Oligo professional. Um, if you don't know, who knows, Elon? Came... <laughs> Sorry, if you don't know how to say it. Who knows? You're the only one that yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's oligo prof professional, and the name came from is that when we kind of launched the brand back then permings still a big thing and so basically we launched a perm and in the perm there was an ingredient which was an oligo element and basically an oligo element is when we combine a couple of ingredients together to create an oligo element it was more common in skincare but we kind of brought that concept to, to, to hair care to perming and we felt that the name was cool the name was different and we kind of adopted it um as a brand name uh, but early on, there was just three products, which were primarily the perms. That was our first, um, uh, that's when we first launched the brand, primarily with perms. Are, are you still manufacturing the perms? Absolutely. Absolutely. I find it amazing. And, and there's, you know, I've been doing, I've been in the industry for 30 years and it's always a, the wave of the perm, right? I mean, that, that almost sounds like a pun, you know, the wave of the perm. I thought you were about to call me out. No, 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 I wasn't. Um, but, but it's, it's interesting to me that, that like when I first got in the industry 30 years ago, like it was a heavy part or, or, or major part of our industry. And then it kind of like slowed down. And then, you know, certainly in the early nineties or like mid nineties, like everything was as smooth as we could possibly make it, you know, and then the perms weren't there, but then ever so often it kind of peaks its head up. I know that um uh what's his uh the guy in in new york nick arojo arojo he he did just a couple years ago he did like the american like wave or something like that it, I, I i remember that yeah remember that it's interesting to me that like although we get a little bit of movement it never seems to grab on um on, you know like it like it once did you know and and um do you have any insight on that elon why is that or or or, or why why are let's chat it out yeah so we've been looking, I've been personally looking at this category for a couple of years now. And I think, I think something needs to be added to the process to make it cool again. And I don't know if it's a tool. I don't know if it's, if it's a different product. Certainly the trend of, of wavy hair is here. It's coming back to your point, Corey, about, about, about straight hair and all that. 
I think people want body, people want movement. People are looking for that. Women are looking for that. But I think I think that the traditional perm is is not attractive to, to stylists. It's complicated to apply. It's it's tedious and all that. So I think if if either a new product or a tool or a rod, something different, something cool was adopted mm. or was invented, I think it could create a, a crazy, to your point, uh, pun intended, a crazy wave of perming that um, that that people will adopt because people are looking for that. And I think we get we get kind of that that through styling products now. But I think a product allows it to make it more not permanent or more lasting. Certainly, it's something people are looking for. It's just modernizing the process, I think, which um, which is needed. And I personally have been talking to people and inquiring how we could do that. Easier said than done. But I think if somebody comes out with something different, something cool, I think the trend will come back. I think I think why I'm hesitant as a professional, why I'm hesitant to use it is, is because we're layering like the color, the color industry as a whole has done such a great job of marketing, coloring and, and, and lived in color. I mean, you know, there, there's all these different trends about this. I, I'm I'm cautious i think is the best way to say it i would be cautious about wanting to put like a perm another chemical um system or another chemical on top of 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 you know certainly bleached hair i mean you know right now like you know lightning and bleached hair is what you know is what everyone is doing one way or the other you know um we're getting those those other looks and um and so i i guess i would be hesitant and, and that's what would keep right. from like jumping all the way in I mean, I do perms and I'll say that the scariest part to me is like the neutralizer because that's where all the damage comes from for me. Yeah. Yes, I perm my hair. I do. She does. I Here's perm my hair. On, Elon. <laughs> but I put it in and I roll it like a traditional granny perm. Yes, I do. And I go home with my the rods in like after we rinse it out for five minutes and I wait for it to dry instead of doing the neutralizer I let it sit until it's completely dry and then I take them out and rinse it but you can't ask a client to do that but my hair is feels like virgin hair it feels very healthy because I don't yeah. do these are on top of my color because I do color my hair too Elon there's your product right there what we need is soft perm rod <laughs> disposable hey that's not a bad idea it's not a bad idea Corey, you know what's interesting is that we do, like, so we have events in Montreal. We have an academy in Montreal. We do the events and and when we do education. And oftentimes the curriculum is to talk about color, to talk about color, to talk about toning, right? And for whatever reason, somebody brings up a question about perming and we spend like an hour talking about perming. It's always the same thing. And it, it fascinates people. And I'm like, something needs to be done of, of finding some, because everybody talks about it. Yes. Everybody Right. But but for whatever we we can get it right. I I do want to tap into the word innovation. Right. So that's something that literally got me to love one, Elon, you and your family, but two, Ollie Go Professional, like the innovation driven products. And it makes sense, right, guys, everyone listening, it makes sense that they already were in the innovation side in the forefront of their business for so many years. So what is it in your point of view, Elon, the importance of innovation? Like when we talk about black light being intermixed, Chlora Gloss is a water-based demi-permanent liquid hair color, which is unmatched, unlike anything else. Our Chlora Permanent is exothermic, like as a president of a color manufacturer, what is the importance of that innovation and how do you stay on top of it? Well, I think I think from our perspective at least, the, the driving force behind growth yeah. is is innovation, is developing unique technologies for every segment. And you've mentioned a good a few examples, but ultimately developing products that perform at a high level. And I think when you do that, you cater to uh, to, a, to a type of client that is or stylist that is looking for these types of product. And so I know, you know, the 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 styling and care side of of the beauty industry is oftentimes more driven by marketing, by you know, social media, a lot of stuff. And then and then the technical side, whether it's 
lighteners, whether it's color, whether it's demi-permanent color, are oftentimes driven also by social media, of course, but they're driven by innovation, technology, and education, right? And so, so for us, it's part of the DNA. It's what we do. Um, we have a team of developers that that do their thing. Obviously, we have uh, objectives, and we have we look at a pipeline, and that's what we're looking to do to add to the line and, or whatever. But at the same time, they also have uh, uh, close to twenty percent of their time, which is free time. They could do whatever they want with it. They could develop develop whatever crazy idea they come up with. And sometimes you're like, whoa, that's crazy. But then it trickles down to another great idea. Hmm. So so we cultivate that culture by by allowing them to spend 20% of their time, the, I'm talking about the development team, to develop whatever they think is or whatever they want to work on. And you'd be surprised uh, what kind of cool ideas come out of, of that 20%. And that feeds into what we try to do. But ultimately, I think my my simple approach is what problem are we solving? You know, we do, whether it's a Lightner, whether it's a demo, with this color, how could we make the process better? How could we make the process safer? How, you know, and, and I think identifying issues within the process and trying to develop products that address these issues, I think that's, that's a winning formula of of attracting new users to to a brand, new users to a product, and so right. I absolutely agree, Elon. Also, I'm laughing right now internally because Blacklight Lightning System has the industry in a chokehold. Like that is what literally, Corey, Katie. I'm telling you, like. Blacklight Lightners was like how I was introduced to Oligo Professional. And the moment I was using it, I was like, this has to be a Liza Minnelli. Like, it had, like, what is happening? It's not expanding. <laughs> it's not like, what? I'm getting this. It feels good. Like, so innovation being at the forefront also at Oligo is just something that like revs me up. And I'm just so proud to be a part of the Oligo fam. Elon, yeah, I'll just, I'll just, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, you're up. You're up. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say the following. We, you know, when and, and I give this example all the time when we do sales meetings or whatever, I'm like, what is the best car? You know, so different people have a definition of what's the best car. For some people, it's the fastest car. For some people, it's the biggest car. For okay. others, it's a more cost efficient car. It's the same thing with, with, with hair care products. You know, what is the best lightener? What is the best demo? Is it, you know, so we have our own definition of, of what is the best and, and we formulate based on that philosophy and the philosophy is very simple. Ultimately, we want the product that works well, works rapidly, but leaves the hair and the, and the scalp in the best possible condition. So our definition is not necessarily the fastest, but a product that does that's quite rapid but also doesn't damage the hair, doesn't damage the scalp or minimal damage. And I think developing a, a formulation philosophy, whether it's a lightener, whether it's a color or a demo or whatever it is, I think we tend, by promoting that, we tend to attract like-minded stylists that are looking for these types of products. And there are products out there that, that or brands out there that define best as something else. And, and that's cool, right? We do our thing, we develop our technology, and, and we've been able to, to you know, to attract uh, users that, that buy into that, and, and that's what all it was about, ultimately. Elon, how many, uh, how many employees do you, uh, do you have? We have about 120 employees. Wow. How did, so, uh, so, what, what's your management style? At least, you know, when you have a staff of 120 and two of them are brothers, you know, which, 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 which is like <laughs> another, another different, different like kind of weird, like, like management style or, or, you know, management technique or, or whatever, like, 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 how do you, how do you, well, this is going to be a pun too. How do you manage that? So, you know, first of all, I think it's important being in business with partners is not always easy. Being in business with family is not always easy, but but in our case, we get along with three brothers. We don't overlap. Uh, we do our own things. We have, you know, areas where we focus on. But but above and beyond that, you know, 
we hang out, we get along, you know, we have families and kids and all that. So, so it's easy to get along with family. I think the fact that we're three brothers, it makes things easier. We say what we think and, you know, and we move on. So from that perspective, for me, at least it's easy. And I think they can echo that too. In terms of management style, I'm a huge fan of, of decentralizing authority. I'm a big fan of letting people do their thing. I'm a big fan of, you know, just allowing people to do their thing, to take ownership of, of, of their department, to take ownership of whatever they're doing. And, and and if we screw up, we screw up. We recognize it, we fix it, and then we move on. And I say to my team all the time, we're all going to screw up. It's how we deal with it. You know, we recognize it, we fix it, and we move on. And I think people like that. People don't like to be micromanaged. You know, it's a family business, so it it's easier to want to micromanage because sometimes, you know, you don't you don't disassociate yourself from the business, even though it's two separate entities. The family and the business sometimes is one thing, but we have to learn to disassociate ourselves and say, you know, this is the business and and our team is doing their things. And and like I said, we attract people that that want that, people that want responsibility, people that want to grow, people that want to take decisions. And like I said, if it's not the wrong, it's the wrong decision, it happened. I make wrong decisions all the time and we fix them and we move on, right? So it's not about, and I give an example to um, to our teams. I'm not, a, I'm not a big baseball fan, but I will give this example. To make it to the MLB Hall of Fame, you got to hit the ball right three times out of 10. If you get it three times out of 10, you'll probably end up in the Hall of Fame. And the same thing in business. You don't need to be a superstar uh, to get it right all the time, you know, as long as you get it right more often than not, and when you don't get it right, you recognize it, you fix it, and you move on, we'll be fine. Simple as that. That's all. Awesome. Well, I'm revved up. I'm ready. You well, hear me? If I've never been more revved up in my life, Elon. <laughs> That's it. Elon, do you, do you have any family members that aren't in the business? No. So it's don't. Just your brothers? Yeah. Well, my parents are still in the business. They're somewhat retired. They're like, they spend the winters in Florida. They're here. Um, my, my dad, actually, we had a conference room on the first floor and he transformed the, the, the conference room into a, into a painting studio. And what he does now, he comes in and he paints and does his thing, which is really cool, man, which is I really love cool. It. So, I love uh, it. But they're not as involved in the business anymore. They're in their mid seventies. They're kind of somewhat retired. So, uh, so it's the three brothers, and then that's it. We we need uh we need we need to see some of his paintings on social. All right. Well, speak to the social team and uh and post some of these. <laughs> that would be very very cool, man. Yes. Or maybe... I'm very surprised, man. He's very talented. I'm like, he got into it, and he bought all these little tools, and it's really cool, man, to see how uh you know how creative he can be. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it can be one of his art pieces can be like a special collection, right? Yeah. It's like the art that's on the package. So I think we're on to something. That's it. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I love it. I do. Can I pivot really quick? Because I really want to talk about this um, without any shame and all celebration that there is something so magical happening. It's called Heritage Tree Host, the Jay Ladner Experience. And Elon, one thing that I love the most, um, one of the most, because there's a lot, but there's always this ex excitement to cur help curate and be a part of special events within the industry. And all ago has always been a yes and, right? A yes and like, okay, yeah, this sounds good. And how can we make it better? So all of a professional, everyone listening was the first brand to say, we're all in. We're all into the Jay Ladner experience in St. Pete, Florida, which is my homecoming, right? Because that's where I was homegrown um, in the industry. And why do you believe that it's important, like all go professional, like brands like all go professional to support these stylist focus events? And also a huge thank you for also getting into Absolutely. it. Listen, I could speak hours about it, but I'll just say the following. I think as a manufacturer, we have a responsibility towards the industry. And yes, we're in business to sell products, 
But above and beyond that, we have a responsibility to invest in the industry, to support stylists, to give education, whether it's, whether it's oligo education, whether it's Jay Ladner education, it doesn't matter what education it is. If we could support education, it's important. And ultimately, I think it allows us to build a community of stylists that support each other. And so for us as a family and for us as a brand, um, this is one of the KPIs. You know, after time in business, we talk about revenues and costs and profit and all that. And it is important to stay in business. But it's if that's the only thing you're in business for, in my humble opinion, it's not a successful business. For me, at least, to have a successful business is, yes, all that stuff, revenues, all that. But above, above and beyond that, to also give back to the industry, um, to do events, to do education, to do all that stuff. And lastly, I would say to give back to society. So we're very involved in a few charities in, in, in the city, uh, helping people. We sponsor an event, you know, uh, it's called the weekend to raise money for cancer and all that fun stuff. So, so to us, I think a successful business or a successful brand is a brand that does all that. And so uh, hair industry is one of the events that we support because it gives back, because it gathers people, and God knows we need that, you know, yes. from what we've lived through with uh, with the pandemic and all that. But notwithstanding that, it's just to gather people, to inspire, to educate. And I think when I personally go to some of these events, I'm I'm happy. I'm, it just makes me happy to see people gathering, doing hair, and learning and inspiring each other. I think that's what it's all about. And and you could do both. It's not one or the other. It's not selling more product or doing those. I think I think you could do both, and we try to do both as much as possible. And I think it it just you know it makes business sense. It feels good. It's giving back to the industry, and it's it's you know it's a win for everybody. So why not doing it? I, I you know I don't know why one would not do it. Honestly, right. yeah, we, right? we we should quote that and like send that out to a bunch of sponsors. There, why why wouldn't <laughs> you know you know? But 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 first off, thank you, Elon, so much um so much for for supporting for supporting us in this um and also if anyone that's listening in, I really want to bring to the attention that when you have brands that are supporting small, small um, events, meaning like not the 50,000, but you know, like, like the few hundred, the stuff that's intimate and the stuff that you really get to learn at when you have brands that are supporting them, it's, a, it's imperative that we also support those brands, right? So when it comes time to spend your dollars, you know, when it comes time for you to buy a lightener, for you to buy a color, for you to at least at least invest some time into into in this case Oligo and, and what they're bringing, and understand that they are in the room for you. Like Elon just said, they're in the room for you. So when it's time to invest our money, we should be in the room for them, or at least investigate in, investigate these brands and, and see the ones that are really making the difference in your career. Because I'll argue all day that when you go to one of these big, I'll use Premier, which I absolutely love Premier. Let me be clear, but when you go to these things it's really really hard to um to absorb what's happening in the room it's the small events where you get to really learn you get to really absorb i know when i go to the big events my my add is off the hook you know i can't really absorb anything so uh, it's these small it's it's these small events that that i that i always look forward to um um because it's more of a it's better it's a better learning environment you know so you know anyways and um you know so again when you go to spend your money remember who's in the room with you that's all I have to say. That's my PSA. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, before we sign off, Elon, I I think you're pretty cool. Um, and I know everyone listening thinks you're pretty cool now, too. But what are, like, some fun, like, what's a fun fact about you um, that you're doing right now in your life that is really cool? What What is that? Well, there's one big thing in my life right now that I'm doing outside of work. I don't know if it's cool, but I think it's cool. So I do, um, I train for triathlons. So I actually completed my first, um, I've done a few triathlons, but I've completed my first uh, half Ironman, ironically, two days ago. So this Saturday um, in, in Lake George, New York. So that's something yeah. that I enjoy, it takes a lot, you know takes my mind off work and the stress and the pressures of, of the, right. So that's something that I really enjoy. And, uh, and yeah, 
So I don't know if it's cool, but it's something I enjoy doing. I think it's cool. It's, it's very cool. cool. And the discipline that it takes is is extraordinary. You know, the discipline to 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 train for it and then to be able to do it. That that that's extraordinary. Bravo. Sir. Yeah, it's cool until you see me in a in a in a tri suit. Then it's less cool. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need those visuals. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. But Elon, really quick, in that experience, right? And congratulations on that. But what would you say the biggest lesson that you know training and then also finishing right a race like that has kind of like instilled in you or has inspired you like what would you say of what it is you know it's the same I, I say this to friends and to my family it's it's the same values you have in life and the same values you have in in business first of all yeah. you need discipline right and and hard work and 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 you know and it happens so a lot of discipline hard work and good things happen and just a small anecdote my first half ironman was supposed to be earlier this summer but i didn't feel well you know i had a, i don't know i didn't feel a stomach flu or whatever so i started my race and i didn't complete my race and i was very depressed very done and all that but again you get up and and you just train and you do your thing and the discipline and so, so whether it's half Ironman, whether you're a student in school, whether you want to build your career as a stylist, whether you want to build your Instagram, whatever it is, your social media, whatever it is, it's about discipline. It's about yeah. hard work. And with that, you get results. And there's no, you know, there's no shortcuts. There's none of that, right? I mean, you could cheat yourself into taking days off or whatever it is. You know, we all need days off, but you could cheat yourself into doing things. But at the end of the day, there's no shortcut. And so mm. that's one I enjoy the why I enjoy the training because you know what you put in is what you get out of it. You could take days off training and all that, but at the end of the day, it impacts your results. So so you know I enjoy that, and so that's so simple but so powerful. Well, I think I, it, mm -hmm. it, it, he's saying just show up, show up, show up. You know, just continue to show up and show up in your sure. best. You know, and I, I think that that's it. Elon, how can people find you? How can people find Only a Go? How can Only a Go Professional? <laughs> <laughs> all a GoPro on on Instagram, all a GoPro online, all a GoPro on TikTok. We're although the name of the brand is All Go Professionnel, which is spelled in French <laughs> to confuse everybody. Yeah. But our our <laughs> our handles and our website is all go all go pro dot com. Do you guys remember that movie Profession The Professional? Yeah. It was a French movie. Oh, it was about the who was the girl. I have not seen that. I thought, wasn't it about the guy who was a um? He, he was, was like a hitman. Hit yeah, 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 yeah. He was. It a rings a bell, but he was a hitman. He kind of looks like you now, Elon. I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, he was a hitman and like this like orphan girl. Like yeah, her family him. was murdered, and he yeah. saved her life and like oh took her gosh. in, and then it's she watched so his plants. Yes, it's so good. Who was the oh my god! Man? I think it's about yeah. me and Elon. <laughs> he took you in i like it <laughs> come oh, to our family come yeah. eat over here <laughs> that's the absolute best so uh oh oh one more question elon i'm sorry and then we'll get out of here where is it is uh is uh only ago like um are they self-distributed or, or do you got do are there, uh distri distributors in the u.s so we have we have 26 independent distributors all over we covered you know all of North America, Canada, U.S., uh, including, you know, including Puerto Rico, including Hawaii, including the mainland. So all our independent distributors, I think you'd find them on the website. If you're not sure, just send us a DM and we'll tell you who the distributors are. But we have independent distributors in every in every town in this beautiful uh, country. OK, so um, so uh, 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 who's your distributor here in D.C.? DC, it's Twin States. Oh. Actually, yes, you know Twin States. Oh yeah, of course. That's our, that's our buddy Dwayne. That's our Dwayne, buddy Dwayne. Yeah. That's <laughs> right, man. They're good people. They are good so, people. Yeah. A lot so of some distributors carry more than one state. Some carry one state, but ultimately uh, they cover a, a territory exclusively. So, yeah. Well, well, here they have to cover more than one state of their. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> that's awesome Elon dude I know it's uh I, I know it's a lot to take to take an hour so I, I really really appreciate it uh Jay thank you for introducing us and and for making this happen and uh, uh Katie and everyone else thank you so much thanks for hanging out with us and thank you very very much for joining us on your day off
Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hairdistry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.